Now, we're going to talk about the different needs to have an actual business continuity plan in place. And a lot of it seems intuitive. Of course, we need to have some t something in place in case a disaster happens and that we can keep the company running. But there's also there's a lot of much more detail-oriented information uh, that you need to understand if you are responsible for developing the plan, um, if you are a CSO or a CISO who's overseeing a team that is developing this type of a plan and all that encompasses it because this is a really large project that can actually take up to three years to complete. So think about um, your actual company or organization. Most organizations actually aren't prepared. If you look at a lot of the statistics that are, um, have been created, most organizations are not properly prepared to deal with a large disaster, maybe a small uh, issue that can, that can be dealt with. But if you know, the facility is destroyed or even um, uh, ha half of it's wiped out, most companies are not ready for that. So some of the questions that you can ask um, to understand if your company is, is uh, properly prepared is, is your organization impact tolerant? Meaning that you, do you actually understand the impacts that your company may go through and do you, can you recover from that? That's what impact tolerant means. Um, have you mitigated points of failure? And that means you have to actually identify the points of failure that would negatively affect your company overall which we're going to go through. Uh, that means to identify the critical functions, the critical resources, uh, the backup solutions. Are the personnel um, uh, prepared on and properly trained on what they need to do? Now this is something that most companies don't do well, is that they may actually develop the policy and the plan, uh, but they don't get the necessary people involved who actually has to carry this out if a disaster takes place. A lot of times it's just a team that creates documentation, it's proved, and then it's put away. Um, and if the people don't know what to do when something happens, it's kind of a waste of time. So is everything documented properly? We're going to walk through the different things that actually need to be documented. It's not just the development of a BCP. Um, there's, there's procedures, there's teams, there's a lot of things that need to be written down uh, so that in the time of chaos that people can actually follow them. And is your BCP uh, current? Uh, we'll talk about this at the end of the domain. A lot of these plans go out of date right away because our environments are so dynamic. Our technology changes, maybe our business model changes, uh, maybe we merge with another company. And a BCP is such a large project that a lot of people think of it as a project, meaning there's a stop and there's a start. We're done. We don't have to worry about it anymore. But it has to be continually updated. So reviewing it, um, and if you see it's outdated, then, then you're not ready. Your company's not properly ready. So over time, um, you know, people, I've known people who are in this industry of developing these types of plans, and they didn't have a lot of work because uh, for years, it's been hard to actually uh, do the sell to management because you know management has to pay for something that they don't see a direct um, effect on their bottom line. They see a negative effect in that they have to pay for the resources to carry it out, but it doesn't um, help their profit. So a lot of times it was a hard sell uh, to management that this actually had to be paid for and carried out. 